a ruler in history seems to come with the added perk of being a sociopath more than half the time. It also comes with a lot of greed, debauchery, and extravagance because I mean, whoever tells you no is going to meet the sticky end. I'm Adam Andrews and today on Bumblebee I'm going to tell you about 10 of the most spoiled kings in history. At number 10, Caligula. This guy reigned for four years and the amount of straight up excess he demanded led him to be the first Roman emperor to be assassinated. Caligula was 25 years old when he took power in 37 AD and he was great. He announced political reforms and recalled all exiles, but within the same year he contracted an illness that sent him a little uh, loopy. Like to the degree of ordering hundreds of Roman merchant ships to form a two mile floating bridge across the Bay of Bowley so he could spend two days galloping back and forth across it on his horse, Incitatus. Oh, um, speaking of his horse, he loved that animal so much, giving him his own house with a marble stall and ivory manger. And he almost appointed the horse consul before Caligula met his end. It got worse in the years after his demise, like in 39 and 40 AD when he led campaigns to the Rhine and the English Channel where he actually avoided battles and instead did things like commanding his troops to plunder the sea, which means gathering shells in their helmets. The perfectly sane kind of things that you do when your favorite quote is, remember that I have the right to do anything to anybody. Number 9, Ramses II. He literally has the most statues of himself of all the 4,000 years of Egyptian pharaohs. That is really all I gotta say actually. Ramses II was undoubtedly the greatest pharaoh. I don't know if that justifies his spoiled ways, but it helps explain them at the very least. He was a master builder, a war hero, and brokered peace all around over his crazy long reign. But he was also really good at the whole propaganda thing. Like I said, he has statues of himself all over Egypt that even to this day are hard to avoid. Not to mention all the buildings built in his name, including a whole temple to himself and one to one of his wives, Nefertari. He moved the capital from Thebes to the new capital he created named, unsurprisingly, Pi Ramses, from which he ruled for 67 years, had literally hundreds of children and dozens of wives. He also, kind of hilariously, renovated statues and temples erected by previous pharaohs with his tag. Either to pay respect or what I'm going to go with, just to say, look at this big statue of some other dude, but always remember, trademarked by Ramses the Great. P.S. I'm awesome. Number 8, William the Second. Usually being overshadowed by his father William the Conqueror and his successor Henry the First, William the Second wasn't a well-liked king particularly by the church, because William kept positions for bishops empty so he could take their incomes, which made me laugh when I read it actually. The Archbishop of Canterbury Anselm really had an issue with William, even going into exile until William ceased to live. But this just left the revenues of the Archbishop of Canterbury vacant, making William able to claim those funds as well until the end of his reign. He obviously was not a fan of the church, but his armies definitely were a fan of him. He was great when it came to warfare and was able to pretty much guarantee loyalty by showing it. William didn't have any heirs or wives which led people to question his preferences if you know what I mean. He ultimately met his end at the tip of an arrow during a hunting accident, but he was always remembered for being ruthless and giving in to his vices. Number 7, Morad the 4th. Something about kings being great also goes hand in hand with them being terrible at the same time. 17th Sultan of the Ottoman throne, Murad IV came to power in September 1623 at the age of 11. But since he was so young, the Ottomans were ruled by his mother, Kosim Sultan, and other relatives, who did a pretty horrendous job. As a tween, he walked around the cities dressed as a commoner and would keep a list of those he could benefit from and those he could punish at 11. At 21, he took control and also took some extreme precautions in order to eliminate the corruption within the empire, banning the use of alcohol and tobacco and coming up with severe measurements for the regular collection of taxes. Murad IV would never be okay with people disobeying his laws and directives, even going around the city in plain clothes to check any undisciplined actions by the locals and he would personally punish the offenders. He did a lot for the Ottomans, but boy was he harsh about it. He destroyed coffee houses, like, come on man. Number 6, Phalaris. 
Phalaris of Acragas was a tyrannical Sicilian ruler from around 571 to 554 BC. And this dude was so bad his own people overthrew him after his 16 years of rule. Phalaris became ruler by some unconventional ways when it came to other kings on this list. Some think he started as a farmer who held office, and other more fun stories say he was appointed to build a temple, and instead of doing that, he took the money and built a fortress, allowing him to take power. He expanded the territory of Acragas from the south coast of Sicily all the way up to the north coast, but he was known much better for how gosh darn cruel he was. The most famous story would have to be the one of the brazen bull. An engineer was hired by Phalaris to create a new device for doing heinous things to his prisoners. The engineer presented him with a bronze bull. There was a door that could be opened to place a prisoner inside, then they would light a fire underneath, heating up the bull and causing the poor soul inside to thrash about and yell, making the bull seem alive. He then used it on the engineer. Thanks to the citizens revolt though, he got to be the last victim of the bull. Looks like karma's a bull. <laughs> Number 5. Louis XIV. King of France, the Sun King, the God Given. Ruling from 1638 to 1715, Louis XIV was well known for his love of art, which was apparent in the royal palace of Versailles he created. His love of women for his multiple wives and many more mistresses, and the comparison of himself to God. Even taking up the sun as his symbol, being representative of Apollo, the sun god, and the literal reason we're all alive. A good symbol, honestly. The Palace of Versailles was used to host comedies, operas, and tragedies, and spectacular parties. His suite in the palace was made up of three apartments, all for himself. The palace was big enough to hold his entire court so that none of them could really plot against him without him knowing. It also contained the Hall of Mirrors, which was a 71 meter long room with 357 mirrors around 17 arches opposite the massive windows. Unlike most other kings on this list, Louis XIV was a fantastic ruler. He was an incredibly lavish one though, which equals spoiled in my mind. Number 4. Ivan the Terrible Ivan Tsar was a great military leader, pretty much setting up the Russian Empire. A great leader with an absolutely terrible temper. His rage-filled outbursts just got worse and worse over the years of his rule from 1530 to 1584. One of these incidents even ending in the stab-filled demise of his own son. He had a special force called the Oprichina who eliminated anybody he felt threatened him. And he led this force to Novigrad in 1572 resulting in the massacre of Novigrad. Which gets him a firm place as one of the cruelest of Russian rulers. There is the even more popular story of him making that uh, peculiar looking castle in Moscow and then dispatching the man who designed it so no one else could have one. He is one of the most cruel, paranoid, bad-tempered, and greedy rulers in not just Russian history, but history in general. Literally terrible. Number 3. Nero. Another Roman emperor who was effectively insane. Hmm, seems to be like a trend. Best known for his spicy parties, political de-lifings, persecution of Christians, and love for music that led to the rumor that Nero played the fiddle while Rome burned during the Great Fire of 64 AD, Nero first became emperor at 17, and the first little bit of his rule saw him be responsible for the demise of multiple people, including his mother and his newest wife, Poppea in a casual outburst of rage. He was quite the artist, singing and performing and encouraging others to take lessons, and he held sport events all the time, even taking part himself. Remember that fire I talked about? Well, some people believe he may have started it himself in order to make a bigger palace. But if he did or didn't, he blamed the Christians and punished them much more than necessary, like dressing them in animal skins and having them torn apart by dogs, or being burned to the afterlife in pyres that would light his own garden parties. Oh, and he bankrupted the Roman treasury building the aforementioned palace where he held his ridiculous parties we talked about before with a 100 foot golden statue of himself. Nice. Number 2. Bad King John Kings be bad sometimes. But when it came to lechery, treachery, and shocking acts of cruelty, the king who sealed the Magna Carta takes the cake. According to the historians at least. While known for the Magna Carta, he is also well known as the king involved in the stories of Robin Hood. But these being fairy tales, was he really that bad? No! He was much, much, much worse! During the time that he ruled, most nobles who were captured in war were kept in not so bad confinement. John said no though. 
like when he captured his own nephew who miraculously disappeared, and about 22 knights who were sent to a castle to starve to the afterlife, to stop their families from continuing to fight. He did the same thing to the wife and son of his former friend. If that weren't bad enough, when his brother, who was king at the time, was taken prisoner, he tried to seize the throne, and he is famous for forcing himself on the wives and daughters of his own barons. As you may remember from Robin Hood, there was a monetary aspect to his horribleness as well. The taxes and fines he levied were to the point of extortion. I talked to Andrew, who talked to the chief, and he said, King John ain't it. Number 1. Henry VIII. Ah, here we are, the main man himself. We've talked about him before, and how could we not? He's arguably one of the most infamous English kings. Historians have described him as obsessive, syphilitic, and a self-indulgent wife delifer and tyrant. These historians probably leave the best Google reviews. It's not just his whole multiple wives to find a male heir situation that makes him spoiled. Well, kind of it is. To achieve his personal ends, he literally spurred on a religious revolution that created the Church of England, the formal end of monasteries, and the Reformation. Which is hilarious because he wrote a treatise against Martin Luther that had him named Defender of the Faith by the Pope. Ironic. He, like many of the others, was a lover of art, music, and sports, at least in his younger years. But he was also an incredibly costly ruler. While he unified much of England with Wales and Ireland, in 1520, with King Francis I of France, Henry co-hosted the Field of the Cloth of Gold, which was incredibly lavish and showed off his immaturity. Speaking of immaturity, there are tons of cases where people were separated from their heads simply for not giving him what he wanted, including some of his friends and his wives. A great number one for this list, in my opinion. Alright bees, that's the list. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe here at Bumblebee. I've been Adam Andrews, you can find me on my Instagram down below. Be sure to check out Bumblebee's Facebook for more content, and until next time, toodles! <laughs> Phalaris of Acragas was a tyrannical Sicilian ruler from around 55, no, okay. <laughs> Looks like karma's a bull. <laughs> this is so dumb, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm all alone. There's no one here beside me. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I. Ah. Incititus and. In, 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 we're gonna go with Incititus. But this just left the revenues of the Archbishop of. <laughs> Phalaris of Acragas. Acragas? His love of women for his multiple wives and many more mistresses. Miss. <laughs>